Hey everybody, welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. I hope you guys are having a great day. So I want to show you how to host a static website on an S3 bucket. So this tutorial is going to include how to set up the policies, the routing if you want to upload like a React application, a single page React application. I'm also going to show you how to upload files to the bucket and also how to point a custom domain to your bucket. Just note that if you want to actually host your own UI, I recommend you use AWS Amplify. They have a nice CLI tool that you can kind of just point it to a directory and host a UI from that. Um, additionally, I'm not going to be covering CloudFront in this tutorial, which is another important service you need to learn if you want to host your own service using an S3 bucket. All right, with all that being said, let me just show you how to host a static site on an S3 bucket. So unlike my other tutorial videos, I'm not going to go through every step of creating the bucket. Uh, hopefully you've watched some of my other tutorials and you already know how to do this. What I'm going to do instead is just show you how I've configured some of these things and hopefully you can learn from that. Starting off, I went to the S3 dashboard and I created a bucket. The main important step to this is that the bucket needs to be named the same domain that you plan to point to that bucket. So for an example, I have a domain called test.thewebdevjunkie.com, which is hosting a little React application here. You need to make sure your bucket has the exact same name that the, of the domain that you plan to use. Okay, That is kind of the key takeaway of this tutorial. It's a little caveat you need to know. But once you create the bucket, um, you need to make sure that it's configured properly for hosting static sites. So the first thing you do is you go to this properties tag and you can go down to the very bottom and there is a static website hosting option. Okay, so you need to probably enable that. So click edit and then go ahead and make sure that's enabled. And there are a couple of things you need to type in, right? The, the default page would be your index page. If you're hosting like a React app or a single page application, typically there's an index file and that needs to be your like your point of entry, okay? And then also for your error document, you typically want to put your index as well. So this is like if an error happens, you can redirect the user to an error page. I just typically just put the index.html because you can have your React single page application handle that error logic if you want to. Um, and then secondly, there's a very important routing rule that you need to set up. By default, if you try to access a route such as like my domain slash hello, you're just going to get an error because S3 doesn't know what to do with that because there's no file called hello in the bucket. Okay, so you need to set up a routing rule that says like, hey, if someone tries to hit an endpoint that doesn't exist, aka it gets a 404 error, you need to redirect that user to a domain. And then also you can tell it to replace like the, the suffix of that URL to the end. So let me show you here. If I were to go to this URL slash hello, you'll see that the URL gets redirected to hello or to the webdevjunkie.com slash hashtag pound slash hello. Basically, if I were to go to whatever suffix URL path here, you'll see that the URL up here gets redirected to hashtag pound slash whatever. So you can set up your React application to rewrite that URL if you don't want that hashtag and pound. But just keep that in mind that you need to set up the routing rules if you want people to be able to go to sub routes inside of your React application. So again, we just set up a static hosting option and set up some re redirect rules and then set up the index and error document. So the second thing that you need to do with setting up the bucket is you need to make sure you have the policy set up. So if you go to this permissions tab, you can scroll down and you can paste in some policies here. So click the edit button and you can paste in this policy. But basically this is saying allow anyone to access any file in this bucket um, these actions, S3 get object and get object versions are actions that you need to fetch a, uh, fetch a file or download a file. And then more specifically, we're saying allow that action to happen on any file. You, this is what the star means inside of this folder. So the third thing is make sure that your block public access settings are off. So go in here, hit click edit, make sure these are all set to off. This will allow people to go into your bucket and download your files as well. It's basically another layer of security that Amazon allows you to set up just in case you don't want anything to access your bucket. So now that you have the policies and that configuration set and you have the static website hosting set, you wanna go through here and you wanna upload your static site. So what I do is click upload and you can just go ahead and click add files. And I have a, a React application already built. So if I go to my workspace I go to my YouTube folder and I think I have like a React, what's it called? Um, React pitfalls, I have a build folder. So I went to my React application and I ran npm build, okay? When you do that, it's going to make a build folder that has a bunch of files. 
All you need to do is copy and paste these files into that bucket, which you can do with the upload function here. So I can just copy all these, or I should say select all of these. You select those files, you basically can click upload. That will upload those files to the bucket or refresh or overwrite those files if they already exist in the bucket. So at this point, you can actually access the bucket. If you go down the properties and scroll down to the static website hosting, you'll get a URL that you can access these files with. Okay, so you see here we have that same application loaded, but notice that the URL or the domain is kind of long. It's a verbose and it's not exactly what we want. So if you have a domain already bought, which I happen to have one, you need to go into your settings of that domain. Let me zoom in, make sure you can see some of this stuff. And hopefully my head is not blocking this, but you need to go to your domain and you need to set up a CNAME record to point a subdomain, or you can do www here if you want to point the full domain to your bucket. But I just want to do a subdomain, so I set up a CNAME with test, and I'm pointing it to that bucket's URL. So that's the same URL that is located here without the extra like HTTP slash slash in front of it. And once you have that set up, you know, it might take a little bit of time to propagate, but you can go to your URL and that'll redirect you to your bucket and load your React application. So that is basically how you can set up a static website using S3. I hope, um, I hope that was a good overview. I hope you learned a couple of things about how to set up static website hosting. And like I said, the proper way I would recommend doing this if you're a beginner is just use AWS Amplify. They have a, like a one click button that you can deploy React applications and it'll create all this stuff behind the scenes. Um, but if you wanted to do this the way I showed you, the more manual way, it's a good learning experience. The next step is you want to look in the cloud front and basically put cloud front in front of your bucket. You can kind of select this bucket as an origin, and then that's going to distribute your application across the globe and make it run or and allow it to load really fast for users. Okay, there's a lot of other stuff you can configure in cloud front. So that's why I didn't want to do that in this tutorial right now, because I think that's a lot of information at once. But be sure to stay tuned if you want to see more about how to point a CloudFront distribution to a bucket and have your application hosted over HTTPS, because that's one thing that you'll notice here. You have this over a non-secure connection, so you definitely want HTTPS and an SSL certificate kind of attached to your site to make it more secure. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave a comment and subscribe if you're new to this channel.